Anak tells Cross River State Resident Electoral Commissioner to step aside after he declared his interest to run for governorship race in Bayelsa State. And the former INEC chairman, Professor Maurice Iwu, has been granted bail after he was charged in court by the FCC and remanded over allegations of money laundering. Hello everyone and welcome to the program. This is Politics Today live on Channels Television. I'm sure Kimalia Channels Television's global headquarters in Lagos. Well, let's begin by telling you some of the latest stories that we have for you. We begin uh, with a story of the former chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Maurice Uwu, who has been granted bail by Justice Chuka, the also of the Federal High Court sitting in Ikoyi, Lagos. Justice Obi also granted the bail to the tune of one billion naira and two sureties, and ruled that Professor Uwu must not communicate with any of the witnesses in the case. The former INEC chief is facing a four count of concealment, fraud, and money laundering of 1.2 billion naira, to which he, was, he has pleaded not guilty. In the charge, the FCC claims that Professor Uwu allegedly aided the concealment of the sum of uh, 1.3 billion, uh, billion naira. Uh, between December 2014 and March 2015. If to be part of the slush funds uh, allegedly shared by former Petroleum Minister Desiani Alice Madweke to influence the outcome of the 2015 presidential election. But Professor E. was pleaded not guilty to the charges. Now, to another issue bordering on uh, alleged uh, uh, money laundering. This, this time around, uh, the EFCC has arrested Mr. Uyi Giwa Osage, lawyer to former Vice President Atiku Abubakar and uh, the former uh, presidential candidate of the PDP son in La Babale, Abdullah, over alleged money laundering. Acting spokesperson of the commission, Mr. Tony Orilade, who confirmed the arrest, says the commission is yet to file charges of money laundering against them. In a three-count charge preferred against Mr. Giwa Osage, the anti-graft agency alleged that Mr. Uyi Giwa Osage and Arunse Giwa Osage sometimes in February 2019 in Nigeria conspired to commit an offense to uh, with making cash payment of the sum of two million United States dollars without going through financial institution, which some exceeded the amount authorized by law and thereby committed an offense contrary to section 18, subsection A and 1A of the Money Laundry Prohibition Act 2011 as amended and punishable under section 16 2B of the same act. The arrest is coming five months after Babale, Abdullahi and Giwa Osage were detained for several days while being interrogated over a multi-million dollar money laundry probe. There are some other stories that we have for you on our political roundup. A federal high court sitting in Abuja has asked parties in a suit filed by four aggrieved members of the Kogi State Executive Committee of the All Progressives Congress to maintain status quo. The aggrieved members are seeking for an order of court to restrain the party from adopting the indirect voting mode in selecting its candidates for the forthcoming governorship election. The court held that pending the hearing and determination of the suit on August 19, 2019, the parties should maintain status quo. A faction of the African Action Congress has dissociated itself from the Revolution Now protest organized by Mr. Omoyele Shawore, the AAC presidential candidate in the last general elections. The party condemned the actions of Mr. Shawore, describing it as unconstitutional and undemocratic. The leadership of the party also announced the expulsion of Mr. Shawore and 30 other members of the party on alleged financial impropriety and engaging in a constitutional acts that are contrary to the party's principles. We are aware that the constitutional rights do not include right to resort to unconstitutional takeover of government or a revolution. 
Meanwhile, the faction loyal to Mr. Jaware has described any such gatherings in the name of the party as baseless, criminal and motivated by mischief. And as asked that the police and security agencies arrest Mr. Leonard Nzemwe and calling on the general public to dissociate themselves from any of such actions. The House of Representatives Minority Caucus has called for a judicial panel of inquiry into the killing of some policemen allegedly by some military men. The Minority Caucus of the House, in a statement endorsed by the Minority Leader, Honorable Ndudi Elumelu, says it condemns in strong terms the killing of three police officers allegedly by military personnel in Taraba State and the purported escape of the kidnapped kingpin Alhaji Hamisubala Wadume, saying these incidents have further demonstrated why the country was far from winning the war against insecurity. Well, our conversation begins tonight and it's going to be about morality and legality. So, get a seat, everyone. The Independent National Electoral Commission has sacked its resident electoral commissioner in Cross River State after it announced, he announced that he would run for governor in Bayelsa State. Dr. Franklin Briay had earlier announced his resignation on Thursday to be able to contest the November 16 polls. He said he will run on the platform of the All Progressive Congress, APC. But the electoral body says that he had been relieved of his, uh, of his duty for using INEX premises to make a political statement. This was made known in a statement on Friday by Mr. Fester Zokoi, INEX Chairman for Information and Voter Education. The commission has relieved Dr. Bria of his duties as a resident electoral commissioner and withdrawn all powers delegated to him. The commission went for that to say why it is the right of any commissioner or official of the commission to resign his or her appointment and join any political party of his or her choice and to aspire for any office or position. INEC frowns at the use of its premises or facilities for any political purpose as this is unlawful and contrary to the code of conduct subscribed to by all its officials. The commission says that although this declaration was done at its Cross River State office in Calabar, it is yet to receive any communication on the development from Mr. Breer. Well, Section 306, Subsection 2 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria says that the resignation of such appointment takes effect on the receipt of the letter of resignation by the appointing authority. The Commission, therefore, tasks its Administrative Secretary in Cross River State to take over the duties of the REC. Consequently, the Administrative Secretary of Cross River State has been directed to oversee the office and take over the functions and duties for the REC until further notice. Let's take a listen to what the rec said in some portions of what the rec said when he was uh, announcing his resignation. Take a listen, everyone. For the sake of the very important call to rescue the kind, peace-loving, and great people of Bayelsa State, I resign my appointment as a resident electoral commissioner in the independent National Electoral Commission of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, with effect from Thursday, 8th of August, 2019. That's Dr. Franklin Bria, uh, the man who we're talking about tonight and the decision. Uh, beyond what is being said at INEC at the headquarters, they said they don't have official communication from this man. But he has announced, and uh, uh, the, the grievance of uh, the commission is that he announced his ambition in the premises of INEC. Let's break it all down so you get a sense of what this means altogether. I have joining me from Abuja studio, Mr. Samson Itodo is a lawyer and an ele election observer. And also we have another lawyer and a doctor of policy and governance studies, uh, former member of the House of Representatives, Honorable West Idaosa. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on tonight. Uh, we shall be dissecting these uh, perhaps from different angles. I understand also that we have... Uh, uh, INA Director of Voter Education, Mr. Oluwale Osazi Uzi, who joins us via telephone. Let's get some clarity on this matter from Mr. Oluwale Osazi Uzi. Mr. Osazi Uzi, thank you so much for
for joining us uh, tonight. Uh, is it a stack or a step aside? Because uh, if you look at the statement of the commission, uh, not so much of whether it was stacked or, or not was stated there. It was just said that the administrative secretary will take over uh, from uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Bria. What is the state of Cross River State INEC? Well, thank you for having me, Shino. The state of uh, the affairs of Cross River uh, State INEC is uh, stated in a uh, press release uh, this afternoon. And basically, the administrative secretary will oversee the office of REC and oversee the functions that will otherwise have been performed by the REC at uh, non statutory. The administrative secretary will oversee of the affairs of INEC in Cross River State. It is not a stack. We uh, don't think we have passed to stack a REC. The REC duties to pass its responsibilities are as dictated by the Commission, as dictated by the Commission. And what we have said, well, what we do have, what the Commission does have power to do, is delegate its power, delegate duties, delegate responsibilities. In this particular case, we have withdrawn that delegated power, such that uh, the BI no longer functions as the REC of Cross River State. We have said they have been resigned anyway, but no longer functions as the resident electoral commissioner of Kinect in Cross River State. So, I mean, when you say you don't have the powers to uh, sack, uh, uh, you just have the power to delegate, why that? Well, because the constitution is very clear. The constitution um, does not specify what REC can do or cannot do. It leaves that discretion that power to the commission. And the commission has extensive powers. Now, it has been made the rest of any of its officials. So any rec that you see saying anything, doing anything, undertaking any assignment, or doing any part, it has delegated by the commission. And if you look at the third, uh, paragraph 15 of the third schedule of the 1999 constitution, that spells out the powers of the commission. And paragraph 8, I believe, or that uh, paragraph uh, 15, 3, says that the the REC shall have all such parts as are delegated by the Commission. So what the Commission, having looked at its powers of responsibility, said, look, in view of the consideration of the REC Electoral Commissioner, he can no longer, it's no longer tenable that he can continue to perform the functions of a REC. So whether he has resigned properly or not resigned properly, he has declared an intention to leave the Commission and not to continue to exercise the powers that have been delegated to him. And those powers have now been withdrawn, just to be explicit. The power of the government has been withdrawn, so it can no longer, and no longer act as, uh, it's only phone as it is aware in the Kula Palace. Uh, I, I would have asked you, Mr. Luwale, if the commission had a hint that Mr. Dr. Bria was going to, uh, has political ambition. Have you noticed anything before now? Because the, the talk in town is that the commission is, uh, has, has gotten a hint about this kind of situation. No, we officially we had no hint of it. If we had hint of it, then probably we may have access to that. But all I can tell you is that um, it's difficult for us to ask mixed policy to take action based on rumors. And I'm aware that um, the REC had not publicly declared any um, partisanship, and it's not to our knowledge. Um, when somebody on social media drew the attention of the commission, I think it was person that was um, refuted. So, um, we don't really, uh, did not really have any hints that he was there. In this time that we speak to the duties, we did not officially see any partisanship or any expression of uh, belonging to one or having sympathy to one political party or another. To the best of our knowledge, he was not a member of any political party and did not show any partisanship that we know of. All right. Uh, as I have my guest there in uh, the Abuja studio, Dr. Uh, um, Wesley Daosa. Uh, Dr. Wesley Daosa, just perhaps in 30 seconds, uh, so that we can lead us to break. What is wrong in what has happened with Dr. Bria and the INEC wreck? What is it that is done that is wrong? Is there anything? Well, well I, I don't know if you can hear me, Shane. Uh, I think it has to do more now with morality than the law uh, itself. We have heard, the, heard from Dr. Uh, Wale Uzi uh, the situation on ground, so I take it that we are dealing now more with integrity, morality, than it is with law.
you to break it down because I will show you some section of the law that can guide the conversation. But we'll take a break. When we come back, my panel is ready. I'll be looking at the morality and the legality. Join us again, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. It's just a case of uh, a football referee. At some point, he declares that he wants to also be part of the game by being a footballer. Well, some people will say there's no crime in it. But in terms of election and electoral practices, a lot of people will question issues of morality. And that's what gets us talking tonight. When Dr. Franklin Biri in the premises of INEC on Thursday declared that he wants to be governor of Bayelsa State when he still holds the office of Cross River State INEC Rec. So where do we go from here? The commission says we don't have power to sack him, but we have asked him to step aside. We don't have a, an official communication from him. We dissect these issues for you to get a sense of it. Dr. Wes E. Dawsa is a lawyer and a former member of the House of Representatives. He's a doctor of policy and governance also. And we have uh, Mr. Samson Itodo. He's also a lawyer and uh, an election observer. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on. If we show you a portion of the law uh, about the issues of resignation, according to Section 306 of the Nigerian Constitution, and in the third schedule, talks about how the, the, the role of uh, anybody who is in the commission as an INEC and how they cannot be partisan. Uh, Mr. Itodo, tell us, how, how does this come to you when you hear that INEC rec says that he wants to run for governor? Is anything wrong in that? Um, I don't think we should criminalize um, political aspiration. Um, he's got a constitutional right to, to aspire to run for office. So um, that's, that's a fulfillment of his constitutional right. And, and let me also say that this is not the first time that um, a resident electoral commissioner will be aspiring to run for office. The former governor of Bauchi State, um, Mr. Abubakar, was a former resident electoral commissioner um, before he became governor of, um, of Bauchi State. But the, 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 there are legal issues as well as moral issues. We are 100 days to the governorship elections in um, Kogi and Bayelsa. And if his um, resignation w took effect from um, August 8, so that would be, um, be about 98 days. Uh, and so he's within time to actually resign. But if you look at a statement released by INEC, INEC did say that they are not aware the fundamental question to ask, and, and for me, is if you look at Section 306 of the Constitution, um, who is the appointing authority in this case? Um, if you look at the third schedule, paragraph um, 14, um, the president is the appointing authority. And so the question is, did the REC, because um, he's still a REC, did the REC um, convey in writing his resignation um, to the president, and has the president actually um, received it because the constitution is clear that the resignation takes effect um, as soon as the appointing authority receives the letter. If he hasn't done so, then he's actually breached the constitution. The second fundamental issue is, if you look at the first alteration to the constitution under section 156 to be precise, um, it did say that um, um, resident electoral commissioners and members of the commission sh shall not be members of political parties. At what point did direct obtain a membership of a political party is something that needs to be determined because if it's established that he has been a member of a political party before he tendered his resignation, then he would have breached the constitution. And to make it worse, he declared um, his intention to run or resignation in INEC's office. And I consider it immoral and very, very scandalous and a dangerous precedent that should be condemned. Mr. Wesley you have been a politician before, and now you are, I mean, as a lawyer also. Give us a sense of what the third schedule is. It's clear that the third schedule, uh, paragraph 14, uh, subsection 2, says that a member of the commission shall be non-partisan. In this sense, from what Samson has just said, uh, you need to be a member of a political party. If he's found that he is being a member of a political party, what does this amount to, and what is the implication? Well, I think, first of all, I agree with uh, uh, 
uh, my brother here that um, in the eyes of the law, he still has not resigned, notwithstanding that he has declared his intention uh, to run for office and has also, on his own, announced his resignation. Perhaps he does not understand uh, the import of Section 306 of the Constitution, which requires him uh, to resign to the appointing authority. So as far as INEC is concerned, they have just withdrawn uh, the delegated authority to him, but he remains the resident electoral officer uh, working with INEC on the authority of Mr. President. Now, but let's talk about whether or not he had membership of a political party. At this point in time, he himself has not made a disclosure. He has only indicated that he intends to run on the platform of the APC. So we want to assume that he has had some level of secret romance with the APC. And in, in that case, we will require evidence to establish his membership. It's not a matter for conjecture or a matter for speculation. So that's a difficult area to prove. We want to believe now that he's probably now going to join the APC and then begin to seek their ticket to run for um, the governorship. How is what it is that? morally wrong here? Honorable Wesley, yeah. how, how easy is that? For you to now join, because also some party constitution, except it gets a waiver, some party constitution do state on how long you can be a member before you can contest for office. How easy is that to get a waiver? Well, you know that the parties very often give waivers to candidates that they believe can in, in, influence their fortunes at the electoral uh, contest. But the point is, how do you prove a party membership? The most basic proof is a membership card. We haven't seen anyone. He himself has not said publicly that he's a member of the APC as of today. So that's going to be a matter for evidence, and we don't have that evidence. So that's why I said right. it's better to speculate that he plans to join the APC, maybe seek a waiver, and then begin to pursue his ambition. But the point is that his resignation is not even effective. So he remains, as we speak, a resident electoral commissioner, and whether he can meet the timelines for resignation is All a right. different matter entirely. Let, let, let's close the program, and, and, I, and I need to plead with you, Honorable Wesley Dawson, you wanted to talk about morality. In 30 seconds, if you can do that, because I need to come to Samson, who will tell us what the implication is in terms of electoral process, if there is a fear of contradiction when he was in office and all of this ambition. Mr. Wesley Daosa, your in 30 seconds, the issue of morality that you wanted to raise. Yeah, the point of morality is that you can't have an umpire who is uh, respected and expected uh, to deal with electoral matters fairly, uh, jumping into the arena for himself. And the impression that is being given is that um, INEC itself is so closely connected to the political arena that you cannot trust it uh, to have men of neutrality and credibility at all times who can stay away from participating from the game. And that is dangerous for the political integrity and electoral sanctity of the country. That, that's where I want us to close the curtain with uh, something. Uh, if you take it from that point, you have been an election observer. Just in about 20 seconds or so, tell us, do you have fears about his role being in INEC and the fact that he's, been, he's had this political ambition? So whether we like it or not, um, this, would, to a large extent, um, will put the Electoral Commission in a very difficult position. We're just coming from an election that is, was keenly contested. We're just a few days to a governorship election. And for a lot of stakeholders, um, this will cast doubt on INEC's neutrality. Um, there have been, um, people have views that there are elements of individuals within INEC that have um, partisan inclinations or membership of political parties. And this action taken by the resident electoral commissioner, though within his right, um, will affirm those perceptions out there. And okay. INEC in the days uh, ahead will need to prove to Nigerians that right. she is nonpartisan and if she would let, uphold the principles yeah. of objectivity and integrity in the management of Bielsa and Kogi elections. I must sincerely thank both of you for your informed and uh, uh, for your informed thoughts there on the program. Honorable Wesley Dawson and Mr. Samson Itodo, thank you so much for coming out. Well,
The eyes have it, and I will say it's Friday. Do enjoy the rest of your evening, but don't forget, whatever you do, do and make sure that you're on the side of the people, the popular side. Bye for now, everyone.